Today I'm going to show how to do a shibori dyeing technique with Colorcraft Procyon dyes. I have fabric which I have prepared with Fixer. I have an assortment of clamps and wooden pieces and clothespins and metal pieces. I've mixed four colors of dye and then some various tubs and stuff and rubber bands. So. First, I wanna show you how to fold the fabric. My fabric is wet with the fixer and that's why I have gloves on because it can irritate your skin. And the key is to fold your fabric in an accordion fold. So it's sort of a back and forth and back and forth because you want to have as much of the edges exposed. And then after I have my long rectangle, I'm gonna do the same thing the other way. To start with, I'm gonna do a square but you can also do a triangle, which we'll do later. And now I'm gonna start with these uh, wooden ones. What these do is they help push the fabric together and act as a resist so that the dye cannot get in between. So that hopefully the dye will just sort of dye the edges. I'm gonna use rubber bands to hold this. Okay, and now I'm gonna pick a color you can dip this now into a bucket of dye, but I'm just gonna pour some on the edges and that's why I have these little containers so that hopefully I won't get it all over the place. This is black. Um, it's not gonna be super black. There are special instructions that come with this starter kit that tell you how to get super black. Now I'm gonna let this sit for a little while. This piece of fabric I folded the same way I did the first one, but now instead of making a square, I'm going to fold it like a triangle. Again, trying to keep as many edges exposed. I went to the local hardware store and I bought these giant washers. So I thought they could be kind of fun because then it will resist in a circular pattern, but hopefully it'll also soak through the center. Now I'm gonna take purple and pour it over. So now I've prepared six pieces of fabric. We have this one, which is the first one you saw me do. Um, this one was is with metal plates with holes in it and clamps. This one's with the clamps and a giant washer. This one's gonna be sort of a tie-dye effect. Um, I fold it and then put rubber bands around it. This one is just with clamps. And this one, I went a little crazy, and it's clothespins, washers, there's washers on both sides, and then rubber bands. So now I'm gonna let these sit for a while, and I'm gonna put them in plastic, and then in a few hours, we'll open them up and see how they look. So here you can see I have them all in plastic bags so that they hold moisture and warmth so that the color can really get in the fabric and we'll leave that for a few hours. After we finished filming last time, a couple of them I wanted to add a little bit more color to. So if you can see on these three, these last three, I sprinkled a little bit of turquoise dye on them while they were still wet. So you can see that they got a little bit of a different result. But what I did was I let them sit in those plastic bags for a few hours, put them out, rinsed them in cold water, and then washed and dried them. And now you can see the result. So this was the one that I did with the clothes pins. I think if I had folded it a bit tighter, uh, you'd see more of the white squares from the clothes pins. This was the first one that I did with the squares, the wooden squares. The fabric was a little bit wrinkled, but I really liked that effect. This one was the metal plates with the holes in it. So I did get some soak through of the holes. 
this was a triangular package that I'd put the washers in. I think if I had had a third clamp on, you would get more of the, the washer effect, but it still is very pretty. This is the one that we did with the rubber bands. So we got a lot of little stripes in that. And this one was also a triangular one. There you have it. Uh, some beautiful results with Colorcraft Procyon dies and Shibori folding.